Okay, good people. Now we're going to do a case two proof. Now we mentioned that when you have um, when you when you when you, the, when the characteristic polynomial winds up being uh, like a square like this, r minus m squared, um, then the solution is uh, k one uh, e to the m x plus k two x e to the m x. And I never really explained in class where that extra x comes from. That x factor, um, get it? Huh? S factor. So. Let's work backwards. If we, if our characteristic uh, polynomial is r minus m squared equals zero, working backwards, that means the original differential equation was y double prime minus two m y prime plus m squared y equals zero. Now we're going to do an old favorite method that we learned uh, already, and namely variation of parameters. So we're going to let y one equal e to the m x because we know that e to the m x will solve this differential equation. That's that's. I mean, if you don't believe me, plug in. It's very simple. That's definitely a solution. And variation parameters tells us that y, that y is equal to u times y1, and we have to find the mystery u, and that's going to make our lives uh, enhanced and beautiful. So y is equal to u y1, which is in this case equal to u times e to the mx, because e to the mx is y1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative, and then I'm going to take the second derivative, and ultimately I'm going to plug it back into this original differential equation. Anyway, y prime is going to be, I'm just going to use a lot of product rule here. y prime is equal to y u prime e to the mx plus mu e to the mx, and I get that just from product rule up here. Now, y double prime, I take product rule here, and I take product rule of this guy. Now, when I take the product rule of this guy, my, set, my well, I'm going to get the u double prime e to the mx. Then I'm going to get u prime times m e to the mx. I'm going to get one of them. So where's the second one? Because when I take the derivative here, I'm going to get m u prime e to the mx. So that's my second. So I wind up getting from this one and from that one, I get two, ter two things that are the same. And that gives me 2 m u prime e to the mx. Plus, uh, then, of course, I have to take the derivative of the, uh, that's the, f f, uh, the, the other guy. And that's m. So I wind up getting an extra factor of m. So I get m squared u e to the m. So again, I, again, I'm just doing product rule and product rule. Now I'm going to take my y, my y prime, my y double prime, I'm going to substitute them into the original differential equation. And I'm going to get this, this whole thing right here. Hope you can all see it. Maybe you can see it better this way. I hope that works. But I'm just plugging y prime, y double prime, and plain y into the differential equation. And if you look at this, what's going to happen is that every single thing is going to cancel out uh, except u prime e to the mx that 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 thing that term right there is the only thing that's not going to cancel. Everything else is just going to with algebra. Everything else is going to disappear, and I get u prime e to the mx uh, equals zero. Now I want to, but I want to find u. So if u prime, well, first of all, I can get rid of the e to the mx because it's uh, e to the mx is never zero, so I could divide by e to the mx, so we're good. Now what I do is I take the derivative, I take the integral of both sides. So if u double prime equals zero, that means u prime equals some constant. I'm going to call it k2. Why am I calling it k2 and not k1? It doesn't matter, but it, it just the, the answer to me looks out pretty when I do it this way. And now I integrate again, and I get u is equal to k1 uh, plus k2 uh, x, because that's the integral of, of a constant is um, a constant uh, time, the same constant times x, now plus a new constant. Um, Finally, I'm going to, in my variation of parameters, I'm going to take this u and multiply it by y1. So I'm going to take this u over here. I'm going to multiply it by y1 so to get my y. y equals u times y1. And u is just... So like I was saying, y is equal to u times y1. And u is just this. And y1 is that. And when I multiply it all out, I get k1 e to the mx plus k2x e to the mx. And that is where the missing x uh, came from. And I'm going to uh, photograph it this way. Maybe you can see a little more better. I'm also going to take a picture of this and put it into the Google Drive. And this way you get everything. I'm trying to make it as visible as possible for you. Um, and this is just so you can see a little bit more. But I'm going to also take a picture of this and put it into the Google Drive. Hey, everybody, um, it's been a lot, loads of uh, pleasure and great thrill. And that is it. Yay. So, we've, so thus we have proven.